Hi, I'm Mike Driscoll, the president of Indiana University of Pennsylvania, and it's my pleasure to talk to you today about a great partnership that illustrates a lot of what's right with IUP. We're very pleased to have our students working with Renda Broadcasting to provide you with video broadcast of Heritage Conference football games. Our students are working side by side with professionals in the industry, are making real world discoveries, learning how to do the business of an actual broadcast, and we know that when they walk out the door, they'll be ready to go to work and be productive immediately. It's a great service and it's a great way to feature our community athletic teams. Thanks very much. This is Mark Burdick, Vice President and General Manager of Renda Broadcasting. I hope you're enjoying tonight's telecast of our Heritage Conference Game of the Week. We at Renda Broadcasting are very proud of our partnership with the IUP Communications Media Department and the Heritage Conference. High school football is a part of the fabric of Western Pennsylvania, and every week our four radio stations here in Indiana County feature a game. Homer Center Wildcats play on AM 1160 WCCS, the Indiana High Little Indians on AM 1450 WD, AD, the Blairsville Bobcats on Cat Country 106.3 FM, and U92.5 features a different game every week involving Heritage Conference teams. U92 is also the home of the IUP Crimson Hawks and the Pittsburgh Penguins. We're receiving tremendous feedback on our telecasts and are enjoying working with the talented IUP communications media students who are making this production the success that it's turned out to be. So we hope you enjoy our coverage and I thank you for supporting the student athletes who work so hard both in and out of the classroom. Enjoy the game. Tonight's game is a presentation of the IUP Communications Media Department, Renda Broadcasting, and the Heritage Conference and is being brought to you by Octo Sport Grip. If you play basketball, baseball, football, or volleyball, you need to give Octo Sport Grip a try. It will give you the same tact feel you get when you first grip, catch, or throw a brand new leather ball. And it works great on the bottom of your shoes for exceptional court grip. For more information, visit info at octosportgrip.com. Indiana Regional Medical Center and I RMC at Chestnut Ridge, where moments matter. And by Luther Ford Lincoln in Homer City. Luther Ford is supporting breast cancer awareness by donating $100 for every car sold this month. If you come to Luther Ford, you'll buy at Luther Ford in Homer City. From Portage Stadium, welcome to our IUP TV Game of the Week, the regular season finale between the undefeated Homer Center Wildcats and the once beaten Portage Mustangs. With Ward Hilliard, Mark Burdig, happy to be back with you. IUP TV has been following the Homer Center Wildcats, Ward and why not the past three or four weeks because they truly have been in some big games and this is another big one even though it's non-conference. Yeah, it's a huge game really for the Wildcats. It's, it's a playoff game. The atmosphere, the, 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 uh, the opponent, everything is uh, here for a playoff game, and uh, I think it's how the, both teams are going to treat it. Our coverage tonight is being brought to you on IUP TV by Octo Sport Grip, Luther Ford Lincoln, and Indiana Regional Medical Center. Ward, the Wildcats 9-0. and You know, the Homer Center football programs played very few. As a matter of fact, only 11 10-game regular seasons. They have a chance to accomplish history tonight, the first ever 10-0 and regular season team. Well, it would be a great accomplishment. It's a real challenge. I don't know how the coaches uh, managed this week because of the tremendous high and the excitement of, of the victory last week winning the conference. But they need to be up for this Portage team. Portage is going to be sky high. This is their senior night. To them, knocking off an undefeated team would just make their year and it'd give them that momentum into the playoffs. So it's a big game. Not to mention the fact that the District 6 uh, playoffs start next weekend. Homer Center entering this uh, game is the number one ranked team in District 6 Class A. A Portage victory catapults the Mustangs over Homer Center. Yeah, and that has a lot to say, you know, especially when you consider home field. This is a gorgeous field, by the way. If you ever get a chance to come up here, you got to see this place. But uh, it, it's, it's a kind of a field that uh, the Wildcats need to prevail on. They need to force the Mustangs into throwing the ball. And that's the, the thing is, they can throw it better than they have in the past. So that's going to make it an interesting game. Ward, Greg Page in his seventh season as Homer Center's head coach, his father went to school at Portage. He played on this very field. I'm not so sure they had that scoreboard with the uh, video board back in the 1940s, but Coach Page played here in that era. 
Yeah, and there used to be a train that would come by here during the game, and you know, this is nostalgic uh, as you want to get. It's beautiful, it, it takes you back in time, and they play football like that too. Real hard nose, bring a lunch pail, it's going to be a tough one. As a matter of fact, when I say Coach Page, I meant Jerry Page, his legendary father who coached so many years at Laurel Valley, and uh, this should be a great matchup. Finally, both offenses score about 38 points a game. We may be in for a high-scoring affair. Yeah, you would think, uh, but you know what wins championships, Mark, is defense, and one of the two is going to have to come to the fore here tonight if they're going to be successful. It's week number 10 of the high school football season. The Portage Mustangs and the undefeated Homer Center Wildcats. Stay with us. The opening kickoff from Portage Stadium is up next on IUP-TV. You're watching Heritage Conference Tuesday Night Football, brought to you by the Communications Media Department of IUP and Renda Broadcasting. This week's matchup features the Homer Center Wildcats versus the Portage Mustangs, next on IUP TV. The kickoff is away, and it's fumbled by Homer Center at the 35-yard line. Portage saying they got it on the far side of the field. They're unpiling bodies, and let's see. No signal yet from the officials, and John Ireland says Homer Center football, and the officials concur. Fumble recovered by Homer Center. That was very close. <laughs> it's taken. They may have concurred, but uh, it, it was close. I think Colby Schoolteddy was trying to make the catch, and it just went right through his arms and toward Portage coming down there. I don't know how Colby must have wrestled it back, because uh, that's a wowee. That's the kind of thing we didn't talk about. You don't want to have to deal with the turnovers early on in this game, Mark, and boy, Homer almost committed a big one, starting on their own 35. Ball on the left hash mark for the Wildcats. McAdoo in motion, they give it to Newhouse, slanting off the left side, he has three yards up to the 38 yard line. Jimmy Bentz took the safety down for Portage and he is unhappy with that. Uh, Jimmy put him on his seat and he wasn't too happy about that. Number two out there, Chris Ondor, he is a senior, they honored their seniors tonight. That was a pretty good pancake though. <laughs> second down for Homer Center. Keep in mind, Mark, these teams scrimmaged, and it was not a pleasant night. There was some chippiness that night. Yep, it was a chippy scrimmage, second scrimmage of the preseason. Toss right to Ian Lee. Lee to the 40. Lee gets to about the 44-yard line. Tackled defensively on the play by safety Luke Dividock and linebacker Joe Randazzo. I was telling you about uh, him, Ward, coming in with our uh, crew, that uh, they are very impressed, the Homer Center coaching staff, with him, as was Abdatori. Football at the 44, it's going to be third down in a yard. He's not real big, is he? He's, uh, he plays uh, at a linebacker, a corner spot, but he's all over the field, I guess. First or third down in a yard for Homer Center. This Wildcat offense averages 349 yards per game. Lone setback is Newhouse, and they hand it to Mike off the right side, has a first down, lowers the shoulder as he meets two or three green jerseys, and the Wildcat faithful down below us. Love the effort from Mike Newhouse. Chris Onder made the stop along with Cameron Neal. Newhouse and Lee both have a chance of accomplishing history of their own. Two backs in the same regular season to go over 1,000 yards. I don't believe it's ever been done in Indiana County history. Regular season. Yeah, I, I don't know, but I, I, I know if, if Homer's going to win the game, they're going to need to do that here tonight. Football at the 48 of Homer Center after Newhouse moves the chains. Toss left McAdoo. Tries to get to the corner to midfield. Stiff arms a defender, C.W. Miller, and he has pretty good running room to about the 46 of the Portage Mustangs. Miller again on the tackle, one of the cornerbacks. They put it down at the Portage 47, so it ends up being a gain of about four and a half for McAdoo, who enters the game with 316 yards rushing. Very quickly, 
Ian Lee, 934 coming in. Mike Newhouse, 932. That's impressive, isn't it? That's second, a lot of yards. Second down, six. Give to Lee right up the gut behind uh, the interior of that line. Steffi, Grzanek, Monko, and Rora. And not a lot of running room. He gets to the Portage 45 where he was tackled by Brandon Vaco, the defensive tackle, a six foot, 255 pounder. It'll be third down for Homer Center. Just about four to go for the Cats. Yeah, again, they ran that uh, tight formation in the backfield, a power eye formation. They love to run the counter off of that, but Portage had it scouted out pretty well. Portage's defense allows about 246 a game, so not a great, great number. The give to Newhouse, no, Brzezanski's going to keep it, and they have him after a gain of two, maybe three. He'll be a yard, yard and a half shy of the first down. Rendazzo on the stop for the Portage Mustangs. And they put it down shy of the 42 ward, so Wildcats fourth down short. Looks like they're going to go for it here in the early part of this football game. It, it's uh, a lot of things you can do here. You can try to draw the team off sides. This is excellent field position if Portage can hold, and they've done a pretty good job against Homer's inside game. Wildcats, comes out. they come out with wings left and right. Tight end Ben split off the line of scrimmage. Quarterback keeper and Newhouse Fighting for yardage, has a first down for the Wildcats inside the 40-yard line. That was Brzezanski, but... Uh, Did I say Newhouse? I meant you Brzezanski. Said you called it a quarterback sneak, though. Everybody knows. You know, we'll give you one. Look where they put the spot. Yeah. He actually pushed three yards further downfield than that, but they blew the whistle, and, and he barely got the first down from where they blew the whistle, Mark. But it is a first down on the 41 of... Portage, and this is the kind of drive you want if you're Homer. You want to use some time up, you know, keep cranking, and the flagpole has us screened here from the, the clock. It sure does. Scoreless here in the first quarter. Play action pass. Throwing underneath. McAdoo has it to the 35. Forced out of bounds by Portage's Caleb Kephart. Boy, deep they had Jimmy Bench <laughs> wide open. Well, he's coming back, and he's telling Aaron, Holy cow, but you know, Aaron doesn't have the luxury of looking down the field all the time. And that, his first option was to the sideline, and uh, Mike Newhouse is out uh, getting the shoe uh, attended to here, I think. He's got a problem with his shoe. The football, we're going to call the line of scrimmage the 35-yard line of the Mustangs. The drive started on the opposite 35, so the Cats have moved it 30 yards. I formation, wingman right is Caruso. He's in motion behind the formation, right to left. They give right side, and with the football for the Homer Center Wildcats is McAdoo. He slants down to about the 31-yard line for the Portage Mustangs, and Kyle Davis, inside linebacker, made that tackle, and we have an official timeout on the field, and we literally cannot see the minute on the clocks. It's uh, uh, I, blank I, 55 seconds, we know that. Uh, Jerry oh, they're gonna bring the chains in for a measurement. Yep. We're gonna step out quickly. We'll come right back after this, scoreless on the 1160 WCCS MSA Sports Network. First down, Homer Center, give to Lee, hurdles over a tackler, gets to the 20-yard line of the Portage Mustangs, and the Wildcats will move the chains again as they are on the march here in this first quarter. 45 yards on the drive so far, Mark, and uh, another great game. Mike Newhouse uh, got hit on the side of his right leg. I saw him gesture. I thought it was a shoe problem, but they're working on his right leg around the shin or ankle area. That's not good news. Homer's had to operate here without him for about three plays now. Dennis, can you see the clock? They restart the clock. Looks like 7.25 and moving. That'd be but my we, guess. We can't <laughs> see the minute because of the flagpole. Brzezanski gives to McAdoo, cuts it back, and Matt, the junior, down to about the 16-yard line. Good tackling by Portage. Uh, Homer's had some nice gaps there, but uh, Portage has closed them up and made good tackles on, on the Wildcats, saved them from gaining bigger yardage. 
Boy, Bensey was wide open, so they may revisit that uh, pass pattern later on. With Newhouse out there, it kind of affects that play Yeah, he's stuff. off the ground. they uh, not uh, tending to him, but he looks to be limping down on the sideline. Toss right, and it's uh, back to McAdoo's at Lee. Lee has the football to the 20, to the 5. Touchdown, Homer Center. Ian Lee for the Homer Center Wildcats as they drive 65 yards on the opening drive of the football game. And with 6.40 to play in the first quarter, Ian Lee has his 15th touchdown oh, that hold the fort. There's a flag on the field. I did not see that flag at all. That's probably a hold. Usually you get a nice run like that. I thought it was well blocked. But Holding that Homer Center. Oh, wow. Did you see the flag fly or even uh, see no, it? No, I did not see a flag, and I was watching for them. And then once he scored, I looked down here to, to make a little note, and uh, I hear somebody say flag. So they back it up to the 28-yard line. It wake, uh, wipes a touchdown off the uh, board and puts Homer Center in a tough situation with second and 18. They have Caruso to the left boundary, and... School Teddy to the right, throw to Caruso, through his hands, deflected and intercepted. And down the right sideline with a lot of running room is a Portage Mustang as he gets to midfield. Cuts it back to the 45 to the 40, 35 yard line. It might be Kephart that has the football on the deflected interception, it is. And just like that, what a turn of events here. The Portage Mustangs as a touchdown is off the board for Homer Center and now they're in business in Wildcat territory at the 35 yard line. I did, I did not, no, no, there's a, now there's a flag on the other side of the field. Man, oh man, I'm just not seeing anything. I'm not anything. seeing these flags <laughs> at all. Well, that's all coming back. Started at the 28 of Homer you know, of Portage. Oh, so it's going to go again after the interception, evidently. Yeah, the ball was tipped by uh, either, either Caruso or one of the Portage guys, and then he tried to, uh, Anthony tried to come back to catch that, and, and the, uh, I guess it was Kephart was out there, took it out of the air, so that sets Portage back. Looks like 25-yard line of Homer Center. So Portage takes over at their own 24, we'll call it. And Berea hands the football off up the middle. And with it is Caleb Kephart, I believe. Let's double check it. Or was it Dividock? Dividock had that uh, football. Jimmy Bentz. Yeah, he's the on first the option. He's the fullback. They run that uh, double wing where they come back with either slot. Boy, that was a messy sequence, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. That was a shame. It was a great run by Ian Lee. Second down, seven, three-yard pickup to the 27-yard line. And Berea boots to his left, looks, loads up, throws underneath, has a man, and Caruso pops him, but it's a completion up to the 33-yard line. Completed to Dividock. What nice hit uh, by Anthony Caruso, the real solid pop. Going to be third down and about a yard. They ran a lot of passing plays in the scrimmage that we saw, Mark. Of course, you can't tell by that, but it's, it's different than Five. we're normally used to. And, and again, Newhouse is still on the bench down below us. 5.20 to play in the first quarter. We're scoreless on an IRMC High School Sports Night. Split backs behind Berea. Wings both ways as well. And Berea going to hand it off. And with the football, it is Kephart. And I think he has enough for a first down. He needed the 34. Flag. And there's another flag. And Greg Page saying that is on Portage. Let's see if the coach of Homer Center in his seventh season is right. He's, he's signaling it. It's on them. I don't know what he saw, but he must have got in the official's ear there. Well, Michael <coughs> Newhouse has stayed healthy virtually all season. And uh, he's That's a, a procedure penalty, by the way. It's just a five-yarder, but a big one. Lone camper down there on the bench here. Uh, at it's a moral defeat, though, for Homer because he's such a leader, and you hate to have him on the bench here. But again, you don't want to risk him either. Uh, he got a lot of football left. They're going to replay third down after the five-yard mark off. Third down and six with 5:01 clock temporarily stopped. We are scoreless. 
here at Portage Stadium Homer Center trying to make history. First ever 10-0 regular season team in school history. Against a very difficult opponent in the Mustangs who averaged 381 yards of offense per game. Berea under center on third down and six. Puts Kephart in motion, rolls to his right. Throwing on the move, has Randazzo, the tight end at the 40 for a first down. Knocked out of bounds on the far side of the field by Anthony Caruso, but it is a first down. Berea, 41 of 83, has completed 49% of his passes for 750 yards, 10 touchdown passes, one interception. 6'3", 145 pound junior. He's a big boy, he's every bit of 6'3". He's kind of a beanstalk out there, but he th I was watching him warm up and he throws a real sharp ball. I mean, it's, it's right on the money, tight spiral. From the 40 of Portage, Kephart in motion uh, and they flip it to Kephart coming to the right and he slips a little bit and he's knocked off his pins after about a sh one ga uh, yard gain on uh, the tackle, Matt McAdoo for the Homer Center Wildcats, and they're gonna say his knee was down inside the 40, so really no gain on that play. Nice job by McAdoo. They love running those misdirection plays, and boy, if they pop them, they're gone. A they, lot of their yardage, I think, are long runs. Yeah, they're working on uh, Newhouse down here, and I, I'm not real happy about that, but uh, nothing we can do, gotta play without them. Now they run the Wildcat with Dividock, uh, and they pitch it directly to Kephart. Kephart comes near side, and he's tackled after a short gain of about three. Stephen McLaughlin in there for Newhouse made that tackle, and the Mustangs again will be faced with third down and long, third and about seven from their own 43. Yeah, Steve McLaughlin's done an excellent job of filling in about everywhere. You know, he's had to play D end. He's gone in for Colby School Teddy at times, Jimmy Benz. And he's played a lot for Mike Newhouse, so it, it's, he's not strange to that inside linebacker spot. This is, might be a fairly large game for Steven here. Two and a half minutes remaining in this scoreless first quarter. Wings both ways, fullback is Dividock. And Berea back to pass, rolls to his right, throws over the middle, has a man. It is C.W. Miller for a first down of the Homer Center 40-yard line, tackled by Aaron Brzezanski. They convert again. The only, the only way to stop that, really, uh, is to get what they did last week was uh, against the Ligonier was to put a little more pressure on the quarterback. You can tell right there that he is outstanding on the roll. Nice pass. And again, it's just so tough to cover when this zone coverage at Homer runs. Two minutes, 14 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Portage in uh, Wildcat territory. Wingman to the right is Kephart, and he's in motion, and they hand it to him. Kephart comes near side, has running room, explodes to the 35, to the 30, to the Wildcat 25, breaks the tackle, gets close to the 20-yard line before he's finished off by Jimmy Bentz and Colby School Teddy. Ward, I told you that I was watching some film on the Mustangs. I was impressed with how many tackles Kephart breaks, and that time you saw that ability. Yeah, but he also saw a lot of good blocking in front of us. <laughs> it wasn't just him. Yeah, he had some excellent blocking there, and uh, I was looking for a flag on it. it was a similar run to what Ian Lee had, but it, this was called back. 20-yard gain for Kephart, first and 10 Mustangs. They average 37.8 points per game. Homer Center's defense allows 12.2. C.W. Miller split to the right boundary. Berea under center again, Kephart in motion, and they hand it to him again, and Homer Center clogs him up, and he's going to be tackled for a loss of a yard or two. Excellent defensive penetration by Matt McAdoo of the Homer Center Wildcats, and he had some help. It's a loss of two back to the, to the 22. I don't think you break Matt McAdoo's tackles, Warren. He didn't. Uh, it's just a good crisp tackle around the ankles, and uh, he got a little help on top of it. Nice job there. As I said, it's four down territory for Portage here. Even if that flag was lowered by about six <laughs> feet, we'd be able to see the clock. You know what? I think it's two minutes yeah, right I, now. I think you're right. 202 and counting. We are scoreless. Second down, 12. Berea, practically right in the center of the field, puts Kephart, or Giles it is, in motion and boots to his right. Going to throw for the out pattern to Miller. I think he has it at about the six-yard line. He does. This 
Mustangs move the chains again. It's going to be first and goal at about the Wildcat eight-yard line. That's just good execution. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Aaron Brzezanski was right with Miller. Miller took him deep into the end zone, then did a little bit of a comeback to that ball. And again, Berea just delivered it right on the money. These passes are where only the receiver can get them. Uh, and that's pretty impressive for a kid that's uh, only a junior. I think he's a sophomore, is he not? 14 nothing. Bellwood losing to Richland in the early going. That's a big one as it relates to the District 6 Class A standings. First and goal from the eight. Giles in motion. They give it up the middle, however, and dancing into the end zone, it's the fullback, Dividock. Portage has the early lead. The Portage Mustangs drive. 76 yards, and they draw first blood eight yard run for Dividock, his seventh touchdown of the season. Six nothing Portage with a minute 25 remaining in the first quarter. And that's just uh, a good solid run by Dividock there. He sliced through the inside. Homer was concerned about Kephart, and uh, he just did a nice job of spinning away from Homer's tackles. And this is a position the Wildcats haven't been in very often. Nick they Lutz, the extra point kicker, place kicker, he's 26 of 31. The holder is the quarterback, Michael Berea, right-footed kicker. It's put down and the kick is up, looks strong, and it is good. The team's come up field. Portage has drawn first blood. The Wildcats had a touchdown wiped off the board, and they have one of their standout two-way players, Mike Newhouse, hurt in this football game. So things right now, the Wildcats facing adversity, trailing 7 to nothing. when we continue on the 1160 WCCS MSA Sports Network. This week's game is sponsored by OctoGrip. Back with you at Portage Stadium. Oh. And now back to the SEC Bank broadcast group. By life, by bank, and bank. Nick Lutz approaches the ball, end over end. Caruso takes it at the 17-yard line. Left sideline out over the 25 to the 30. To the 35, tackled at about the 37. Nice kickoff return from Anthony Caruso and Homer Center. We'll start at the 36 or 37 yard line on the kick coverage team. Braden St. Clair, one of the freshmen. One of the things about Portage Ward, 55 on the roster. They do that year in and year out. Yeah, they get everybody out. They, they had freshman dressing before it became a, a requirement. Now, uh, uh, you know, it's still, they still get a tremendous number. That's a lot of kids for a Class A school. 36 yard line is the line of scrimmage. McAdoo and Lee in the backfield, double tights, and it's a toss right, Ian Lee. Lee with a lot of green defenders to get around, and he's going to lose yardage back to the 32-yard line. Going to lose about four yards on that play, and that play didn't have a chance. Now they try to pitch. Uh, the Portage came in, good pursuit on that. And another injury for Homer Center. Jim Bentz is down on both knees. He's trying to get up and uh, going to... Hobble to the bench. He wanted to try to get back to the huddle. So in comes Stephen McLaughlin, and uh, the injuries are mounting. <laughs> Jimmy's Jimmy will be back. He's already angry that he's out, but he got a stinger, I think, from the way he was reacting. It looked like an arm injury, but I'm not sure. He might have just got kicked in the uh, solar plexus area, perhaps. Homer trailing for the first time all season, seven nothing. Final minute of the first quarter. From the shotgun, Brzezanski. And he hands it off to McAdoo. Cuts it back out over the 35, back to the original line of scrimmage. McAdoo on the carry. On the tackle for the Mustangs, Kyle Davis. They taped, uh, taped up a new house down below us here, and I'm not sure if Mike feels comfortable enough to go back in. You know, if he's not, you just don't want to risk it. You know, as big a game as this is, it's not the end of the world here. 36-yard line, the Wildcats will be faced with third and 10, final 30 seconds of the first quarter with Portage leading 7-0. Brzezanski from the shotgun, sidecar to the right is McAdoo, twins left and right, snap a little bit low, but he rolls to his right, throws on the run, way too short for the intended receiver at the 45-yard line. It was intended 
for Jim Bentz, who was back in there, and the Wildcats are kind of out of sorts right now. They have to punt it away. Yeah, again, uh, it was a little rollout right there. Aaron didn't get enough loft on the ball to get it out to Jim. Jim would have caught that. It has still been short of the first down. So, uh, you know, obviously Homer's going to have to just not having Mike Newhouse in there. It kind of changes your whole look in your backfield, and you just have to adjust to that. Long snappers, Cody Miller, Ian Lee to punt. And he gets the kick out of there, and it's a shank job. Comes near sideline, 45, going to roll out of bounds at the 43. And I think there's one second remaining in Mustang the first quarter. First and ten at their own 43-yard line. Homer gained absolutely no yardage on that. 21-yard punt. From the 43-yard line, Portage takes over. West asked down below if that's one second or ten seconds on the clock with the flagpole. Looking at us, one second on the clock. The flagpole is just dead center. There's no way to look around it. Wildcats well, need a turnover. Something change of momentum right now. Berea under center. Sends Kephart in motion, but he gives up the middle to Dividock. Dividock, huge hole to midfield. Breaks a tackle of Caruso to the 45 to the 40. All the way to the 35-yard lines. Plows his way to the 30. As the quarter comes to a close, Luke Dividock runs for 27 yards. And Old Mo is clearly on the Mustang side. 7-0 Portage as we head to the second quarter. Indiana Regional Medical Center High School Sports Night on the 1160 WCCS MSA Sports Network. Seven-nothing Portage as we head to the second quarter. It's been all Mustangs. That's a critical juncture here for Wildcats. They've got to stop Portage. They get down two scores without Mike Newhouse in the game. It's really going to make it tough. They give it uh, up the middle, and this time Homer Center's Jim Bentz has uh, the ball carrier Giles. And um, going to lose maybe a yard. Let's see if they give him forward progress back to the line of scrimmage. Actually, they're going to give him a one-yard gain to the 28-yard yeah, line. Pretty generous. Yeah, again, it, to defend this team, the first thing you've got to eliminate is that fullback. Dividock is is running pretty free now, and, uh, you know, with Newhouse out of there, makes it tougher. McLaughlin has to make that adjustment. Somehow they've got to get their assignments uh, as to eliminating the fullback, and then you got to cover. The, the corners need to be able to come up and cover those pitches and reverses. 
Wingman to the right is Scott Giles. To the left, Kephart. They send him in motion, and Berea going to boot to his left. Berea throwing an out pattern. He has C.W. Miller again at the 15-yard line. Inside the 10, and the Mustangs are going to have first and goal again as they pick the Homer Center secondary apart here in this first half. Well, Berea again rolling out, this time to his left, and he actually had time to turn and, 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 and right his body so he could make that throw, and then he threw a, a bullet out there. And, and Miller, he's doing a nice job of coming back to the ball, Mark. The only guy that's going to catch his behalf is, is that receiver. And Miller's doing an excellent job of making that adjustment. For the second time in this game, first and goal from the Wildcat eight-yard line. Portage leading eight to nothing. Looks like Randazzo in the backfield right now. And Berea going to hand it to Randazzo up the middle. And he's inside the five down to about the four-yard line. Defensively for the Homer Center Wildcats off the bottom of the pile is Stephen McLaughlin. And that makes everything go. If they're gaining yardage straight up, then the Connors will work because the defense is sucked in a little bit. It weakens the wings, and that just allows them to make a nice block, a little trap play, and off they go. And that's what uh, has worked for Portage for years. Uh, every game we come up to see, we see that same offense, but they do it so well. Second down and goal from the four-yard line. Fullback again is Dividok this time. Randazzo, wingman to the right, Kephart to the left. They put him in motion toward the right sideline, and Berea boots to his right. Pressure coming, dumps it off underneath to Kephart. Kephart spins his way into the end zone for a Portage touchdown. With 9.57 to play in the first half, Portage has scored the first two touchdowns in this game. This one by way of pass, and it's 13-0 Mustangs. They're doing a great job with Berea. They're rolling him out, so Homer really can't go chasing him down. He's got a little more time to see the field and his receivers. They're doing an excellent job of getting separation. Homer's trying to pick up with the corners, but uh, they're getting separation, and uh, Berea's putting the ball right there. The only way to stop it is, is to try to blitz on that side of the field whenever he rolls to come in hard with the backer. He just had too much time, and he throws it too well to leave that continue. Lutz to attempt the extra point out of the hold of Berea, and the kick is up. It might have missed wide left as a flag comes in. And it is good. It's rough now, as a kicker, I think. Could be a penalty on Homer Center, and uh, somebody is down flat on their back for the Portage Mustangs. Flag on the field. And uh, we'll unsort it. I think it's uh, it's a kicker. It's Lutz. Lutz. Yep. All right, we're going to come back. 9:57 to play in the second quarter. It's Portage 14, and the Homer Center Wildcats nothing on the 11:60 WCCS MSA Sports Network. This week's game is sponsored by Luther Ford Lincoln. Nine fifty-seven to play in the first half. Fourteen nothing Portage, and Ward. The news got worse during the timeout. Yeah, there was uh, an ejection on that play on roughing the quarterback. And you know, honestly, Mark, I, I don't think it's justified. Uh, I mean, the penalty's justified and all, but uh, uh, it was Colby School Teddy again who came in and, and made a hard play on it, tried to block the extra point. You know, if it, we deliberately threw him to the ground, it's one thing, but he was coming in to try to block a kick and ran into the kicker. That's a penalty, but that shouldn't merit an ejection. And uh, that's really going to put it in. Obviously, they marched the penalty off on top of it. Uh, things have gone from bad to worse. Homer's without Newhouse. Now they're without School Teddy, one of their best blockers on those sweeps. It really makes your offense uh, uh, a lot tougher to run here. Yep, and um, it's also a good receiver. So, yeah, Homer's, uh, they're, they're going to have to dig deep. Yeah, and I can't uh, comment on the penalty. I, I, did, I frankly didn't see it. I, I didn't either. Uh, but, you know, you would think it would have to be significantly worse than what, what was going on there. They approach the ball, and it's kind of a squib kick, and it's taken on a couple of hops by McAdoo. McAdoo comes near sideline, and 26-yard uh, line, he uh, returns the football. Well, if Homer Center was tested last week when <laughs> Penn's Manor battled back to tie the game at 21 apiece, the medal's really tested tonight. Well, yeah, they're getting pushed around, uh, and uh, that's not typical of the Wildcats. They're having a little trouble controlling this offense and, and really missing, losing that touchdown. 
uh, really hurt them. I mean, it, it took away any uh, short bit of momentum that they might have had there. And it got Portage gunned up. And uh, ever since that has occurred, Portage has controlled this football game. From the 27-yard line, the Wildcats first and 10, trailing 14 to nothing. And two players, two starters, two-way starters on the bench. That's like losing four starters. And slipping on the play is McAdoo on first down. And he, uh, as he tried cutting back, he tackles himself at the line of scrimmage. Uh, again, uh, just uh, not a good sequence here. Homer is really going to have to call up some of their uh, <laughs> reserves here and uh, rely a little perhaps more on Aaron Brzezanski and some passing. And uh, that might bring Anthony Caruso to the fore here. Anthony, an excellent receiver with good speed. Newhouse now has ice on his leg, so I think he's uh, Well, he hadn't had his helmet done. on since he came out. I don't think we're going to see him anymore. Eye formation behind Brzezanski, and he's going to boot to his right. Has Bents open, and he hits him at the 32 to the 35, far sideline of the 40, tackled at the 45-yard line. C.W. Miller on the tackle, but the Wildcats move the chains on a nice-looking pass play of 18 yards from their own 27 to their own 45-yard line. Or if I can comment on that ejection. And again, I say this without seeing the play, but the officials have to recognize that the playoffs start next week. Unless it was totally flagrant, and maybe it was, I think you have, as an official, you have to kind of keep your head to for what uh, is in front oh, of the Oh, I jump agree. I, I don't know. Uh, the guys in the booth didn't seem to see it either, so that, that means it wasn't all that significant. Lee with the carry to midfield inside the 45 of Portage down to the 43. C.W. Miller makes the tackle again, but a gain of 12 for Ian Lee, and the Wildcats seem to have some momentum, and uh, they've uh, kind of taken this whole situation to heart a little bit, and you would expect a championship-caliber team like Homer Center to do just well, that. They've still got a lot of talent on that field, and uh, you know, Aaron Brzezanski certainly capable, as is Ian Lee, and, and uh, this this is not a team that doesn't have any skill out there. They're pretty well loaded yet. Tight end left is Stephen McLaughlin. They run the full house backfield. Lee stiff arms a man to the 35, and running in about a bounds is Chris Onder, but maybe 10 or 11 more for Ian Lee as the Wildcats try to respond here to this 14 to nothing deficit trailing with 732 to play in the first half first That's down a, homer center a lot of talk portage doing a lot of talking down there and then you know wildcats i think maybe they've had enough of that uh, ian lee is running with some resolve here right now mark and uh, maybe that's picked up the blocking a little bit too same formation double tights this time to the right is mclaughlin to the left jimmy bents wing wing left is caruso he's in motion behind the formation they give it to mcadoo mcadoo who cuts it back inside the 30, down to about the 29-yard line. Going to be a gain of about four on the play for the Homer Center Wildcats. They actually put it down just inside the 30. Kyle Davis, inside linebacker, made the tackle. Good solid pickup on first, uh, four yards. It's four down territory here. This is important. I think for anything else other than the Homer's mental state of mind right now, they need to get some confidence back. They can push it down here and score, and they know they can. Uh, it's just a, they're, they're getting a little more confidence back, maybe a little more spirit in it. Halfway through this second quarter, play action pass, Brzezanski. Pump fake now tucks it away, comes near sideline. Short gain maybe to the 29, 28-yard line perhaps. Caleb Kephart on the tackle for the Portage Mustangs. And they, they give him the 29, and that's it. So the Cats now will be faced with third down and about seven to go. That was a nice play by Kephart. And Brzezanski gets around him. He's got the easy first down probably, and who knows how much more, but Kephart would not allow him out. 29-yard line, the line of scrimmage. Lee, wing right, also split off the uh, tight end position is McLaughlin, toss right to McAdoo, trying to get to the right edge, he does to the 25, to the 20, has a first down, as he's run out of bounds on the far side of the field by Joe Randazzo, the uh, strong side linebacker, and the Wildcats moved the chains. That was student body right, and well, they moved some bodies. And that was unbalanced right. I, would, I didn't want to interrupt you, but I saw them. He came out on an unbalanced line, and it was strong to the right, so that gives them an extra blocker. Portage couldn't adjust. And as a result, uh, McAdoo was able to get to the outside, and, and a good, solid pickup now. Homer inside the 20. 
First and 10 at the Portage 19 yard line. Unbalanced left. And they toss it left to McAdoo. McAdoo with Billy Grzanek trying to lead the way. Breaks a tackle inside the 15 down to about the 10 yard line. Goes Matt McAdoo. So it's been a steady dose of McAdoo here. And a gain of about eight on that play on the tackle. For the Portage Mustangs, Randazzo again. And they might just come back, oh, let's try Ian Lee now and go the other way until they stop. This, this is a good opportunity to try to pop one straight up, Mark. I don't know if the Cats will do that. But uh, now they're going back to, uh, yeah, they're going straight line now, no unbalance here. Straight eye formation, dotting the eye, Ian Lee. And they give it to Ian, up the gut. Breaks uh, tackle, close to a first down. Trying to grab on to Ian for the Portage Mustangs was Big Joe Byer. And uh, they give him uh, about the nine yard line, so it's gonna be third down and about a yard for Homer Center. Try to get on the back of Sean Steffi, that big center, and get a push here. And so Aaron Brzezanski just keeps it. They've been doing that quite a bit this year. It is fourth down. Oh, I thought oh, it, it was hard. third. Yeah, I thought it was third too. Fourth down and a yard. My apologies. Split backs behind Brzezanski. Caruso wing to the left. Brzezanski turns, hands it off. No, he's going to keep it. Has a first down. Five. Trying to get to the goal line. There's a flag on the play. No signal for a touchdown yet. They're going to say he's out of bounds at about the one or two yard line, but it is a face mask penalty coming on Portage, and the Wildcats are going to have first and goal and very short distance to go. Nice job again. That's a play Aaron runs so well. Just the running, usually with Newhouse in there. Uh, he fakes into the line there and then pulls the ball out at the last second and gets down there and uses his quickness. Clock stopped with 540 to play in the first half and Portage leading 14 to nothing. Need to make a good exchange here. I, I, you know, you just keep it. I think you just run Aaron behind the big Steffi there and get that touchdown. But the exchange is critical, Mark. Aaron Brzezanski has rushed for 208 yards on 39 carries. He has nine rushing touchdowns to his credit. Str straight eye, fullback is the junior McAdoo. Brzezanski under center Steffi and is a quarterback keeper and he can't get to that goal line. Give Portage credit. They had, they had good push from the interior of their line from Baco and Gossard and Cameron Neal and it's going to be second down in goal. Tried to slide left and that's been the side they've been running well on all year long but get, as you said Portage had credit there they plugged that up no give at all that time. Ball at the half yard line last report by the way Blairsville was leading Moshannon Valley 7 or nothing Northern Cambria and Cambria Heights tied at 7. Second down and goal from inside the one yard line. Lone setback is Matt McAdoo. He's been the workhorse on this drive and they hand it to him and they stand him up at the goal line but we have a Wildcat touchdown. Homer Center's on the board with a very impressive 73 yard answer to Portage's second touchdown. It's 14 to six with 4.54 to play in the second quarter. Can Ian Lee to attempt the point out of Brzezanski's hold here. This is obviously pretty critical. Good moment, good response from a team that's 9-0. It looked like they were flat on their backs, but boy, at one pass play, the bench really picked them up. Brzezanski, the holder, he puts the snap uh, down and the kick is up and the kick is good. Ian Lee is now 20 of 28 on extra points and the Wildcats have cut the lead in half. It's 14-7. Portage over the Homer Center Wildcats on an Indiana Regional Medical Center High School Sports Night on the 1160 WCCS MSA Sports Network. Students in communications media at Indiana University of Pennsylvania can focus on a variety of areas, including media promotions. Our promotion students learn their skills by working in a hands-on environment, gaining real-world experience. They learn how to use media to promote, produce and manage events, and how media organizations operate. They create promotional campaigns and help clients pitch their services, products, and events. With excellent classes led by experienced teachers, the Communications Media Department at IUP is perfect for students interested in media promotions. Ian Lee. Ian Lee to kick off for the Homer Center Wildcats. Out of town scoreboard very quickly. Blairsville needs a win to hopefully get in the playoffs. They lead Moshannon Valley 21 to nothing. Cambria Heights leads Northern Cambria 10 to seven. That's a surprise there, I think. Lee approaches the ball, 
It's a squib kick. Going to be uh, rolling uh, past Kephart and Miller, picked up at the 15-yard line, and with it is Onder. Onder out over the 20, near sideline, tackled at the 25 on the kick coverage team for Homer Center, Brian Gerhardt. Nice job, Brian Gerhardt's been excellent on that kickoff team all year long. Homer needed that. You know what else they need? They need a turnover right now, and I don't mean the kind you eat. They, they need that ball back and really swing the momentum in their favor. I would bet that uh, they have some turnovers to the right of us. This <laughs> oh, yeah. spread there. Yeah, you won't let me near that food, so I don't know. First uh, down Portage, they start this drive at their own 25-yard line. They've scored on their first two possessions. Yeah, Homer needs a stop, if nothing else. Bents now an inside linebacker, Ward. They uh, adjust some things here, and they're going to give up the middle to Dividock. Dividock has some good running room up over the 30 to about the 33-yard line. Anthony Caruso on the stop for the Homer Center Wildcats, but they've had success on that dive to the fullback. Dividock, only a sophomore, six foot one, averages 600, um, or he has 643 yards on 79 carries, 8.1 average. Well, and it, and he hasn't heard it tonight. It, I've said it time and again, that is their first option in this uh, offense, and, and you got to eliminate it. You, got, you can't let him run free because that sets everything else up for them. Uh, Homer's got to figure a way to hit Dividock right at scrimmage and, and hold him to nothing there. From the 32-yard line, they put Kephart in motion, and they toss it right to Caleb Kephart. First down to the 35, to the 40, up to the 42-yard line. He picks up 10 yards on that play. On the tackle for Homer Center, it was Jimmy Bentz, and the Wildcats out of necessity with Newhouse hurt and Colby School Teddy ejected in this football game. They are moving some bodies around. Hey, I said McLaughlin, they move him everywhere. Well, he has to cover now Colby School Teddy's position, so that moves Benson on the inside. That's Timeout on the field called by Homer Center. Looks like 358 on the scoreboard clock. Flagpole right in the way of the uh, clock for us from our vantage point. 14-7 Portage. We'll come back to Portage Stadium after this on the 1160 WCCS MSA Sports Network. This week's game is sponsored by Indiana Regional Medical Center. Back at Portage Stadium, out of town scoreboard. Ringgold now leads Indiana in the Whitfield playoff, seven to nothing. Cambria Heights, I think I said it right, but Michael Burdick uh, said maybe I didn't. So 10-7 Cambria Heights over Northern Cambria. Yeah, that's what you said. Blairsville 21 0 over Moshannon Valley. Penguins over Columbus 1 0 first period. All right. Homer needs to stop. I'm going to keep saying it. First and 10 from the 42. Giles in motion, and they give on an inside reverse with the football. Kephart and Kephart to about the 46 yard line for Homer Center. Lucas Monko making that tackle, and he gets up a little slowly, clutching his back. That's all they need. It ends up being a gain of three. The Wildcats had that defense pretty nicely, and Kephart did a good job getting three. Yeah, it was defense very well. He turned that in. That's supposed to go outside there. Billy Grzanek also in on that tackle. It, a huge series, I think. It really is just to get your momentum defensively back, and, you know, with two guys, key players out of that defense, it's really going to be a challenge here. In the backfield, Dividock. Motion man again, Kephart booting to his left is Berea. Berea throws out in the flat as a flag comes in behind. He has Dividock for a first down and more. Tackled by Caruso at the Wildcat 40, but I have a feeling this one's coming back. Well, they, these are simple plays. They're just floating the backs out, and, and Homer's covering the receivers down, so there's no one left in the flat there to pick these guys up. The only way to stop it again, Mark, is, is to put the pressure. That time there was some backside holding. Dumb hold, really, because it's away from the play. Homer will take it, however. They need something to help them. Berea, uh, Jerry can give us the stats on uh, passing for Berea once he gets things uh, entered there. I don't think he's missed any, has he? I can't remember. Back to the 35-yard line. He's been spot on every pass. And, and when you got a guy who can throw like that, you got to adjust. You got you got to come after him. You got to do what they did with Fennel, is, is put some pressure on. It's just too hard to cover these guys. Well, the penalty was at the 45-yard line on the hold, so they backed them up 10 yards to the 35. It'll be second down all over again, but this time 17 yards to go. So that wipes away a pretty sizable gain to the Homer Center 40-yard line. 
Exactly three minutes to play in the second quarter. Giles in motion this time, and they give up the middle to the fullback, Dividock, big hole, breaks a tackle on his feet at the 50, to the 45, left sideline, 40, 35, 30. Brzezanski finally tackles him, but not before he gets to the homer center 20-yard line, a gain of 45 yards for Luke Dividock. First option, first option, you have got to eliminate the fullback, and uh, again, Homer concerned with the pass on a long yardage situation. Got caught up in the wash again. Dividock, nothing fancy, just a straight draw right up the middle. And uh, he he dragged some guys. So, uh, they're setting up shop again at Homer territory. And clock will not be a factor here, Mark. I think it's 245. 43 yards officially on that carry for Dividock. From the 22-yard line of the Wildcats. Kephart gets the handoff coming from his left wing. He slips but maintains footing. Explodes inside the 15 to the 10. Dragging uh, Wildcats to the five yard line. Ian Lee makes the tackle but first and goal again. Portage. Portage just having their way against Homer Center right now. Ward has an excellent cutback by Kephart, however. That play, he was going outside then made a good cut against the grain. Boy, you could see the gap open right up. That's and that's a good, that's the kind of run you get again with it's zone blocking. But, uh, I don't know if that's what it was, but boy, he, he found that hole and did an excellent job. Boy, and again, the Wildcat D has really got to try to call on something big here. 2.29, clock moving, but Portage all kind of time. First and goal from just outside the Wildcat five yard line. Luke Dividock, the fullback. Wingman Kephart to the right this time. He's in motion behind the play, and they hand it to Kephart. Kephart breaks a tackle, and he's into the end zone for a Mustang touchdown. Way too easy that time. Kephart, his 15th rushing touchdown of the season. He came into tonight's game with 1,093 yards rushing, and Portage with 2.11 on the scoreboard clock. They answer Homer Center's touchdown with one of their own, and they now lead 20 to seven. 75 yard drive there by Portage, and uh, hey, it just weren't being denied, Mark. And again, it, it really all started with the dives up the middle. That Dividock's going up, he loosens the cats up. The D, D has to be concentrating on that, and uh, that opened Kephart up on the wing, and that's what this offense is all about right there. Berea the holder, new kicker, and there's a flag coming uh, from a couple of the officials. Portage so flinched on that. Lutz uh, is out of the ball game. He was injured when uh, School Teddy was ejected, and the kicker now is Blake Swires. So they back up Portage, and uh, Swires PAT will be five yards more difficult. And I'm sure he's a pretty decent kicker, too. They, they do always seem to have them out here. From the 15-yard line, so it'll be a 25-yard extra point out of the hold of Michael Brea. The snap is put down, and the kick is up. Boy, no problem for Swires. It is good. 21-7 Portage as we go to break on an Indiana Regional Medical Center high school sports night here on 1160 WCCS, the MSA Sports Network, and IUP-TV. All your professors, all of them, they know that all it takes is one dreamer with passion, one person, and they hope in each of you that you might be that one who makes a longer lasting light bulb, who writes music for the ages, who reaches into the mind and discovers a new star and it can change the world of a fifth grader. We're gathered here to hope in you. Well, listen to this Wood Chevrolet Drive Summary Ward. Six plays, 75 yards, took two minutes, 43 seconds. Kephart's five-yard TD run. Swires extra point, 21-7. Portage, Wood Chevrolet, where Wood deal's a good deal. Swires, end over end, very short kick, taken at the 25-yard line by Aaron Brzezanski. Far sideline, in the loose at the 35 to the 40. And he's just tripped up on the kick coverage team for the Portage Mustangs. It was Zach Kukart. But uh, Aaron almost took that one the yeah, distance. He's, Aaron's not quitting. Neither is this Homer team yet. You know, this game is far from over. You know, Homer's got to figure something out defensively. They can do that at halftime. They have got to make an adjustment there. There's no two ways about it. And then you lose two critical guys off of that. It's not that easy. So uh, they're going to have to talk about it at half. But right now, they've got an opportunity here 
starting at almost midfield. Indiana Ringgold now tied at seven. Blairsville leading Moshannon Valley 27-0. From their own 48-yard line, Toss left with the football Lee. Comes near side to the 50. C.W. Miller can't tackle him. He gets all the way to the Portage 41-yard line. Great running by Ian Lee, who uh, would like to go over 1,000 yards tonight. He enters the game with 934 yards. Getting very close to it. He's had some nice runs. And uh, it, I, again, Homer uh, looking at, what are we looking at, 157 or two? I think it's 157. 155, 155 clock moving, 21-7. Homer should have at least two timeouts, if not all three. Power eye formation. Caruso in the backfield with McAdoo, and they hand it. No, they don't hand it to Lee. Play action. Aaron is in trouble, and he's tackled back near midfield. On the tackle for the Portage Mustang, sacking Brzezanski is Crisco, Joe Crisco, the right defensive end, and they're going to lose about eight yards on that play. He just didn't have a chance on McCork. Hey, Homer had two receivers in the same area, so I'm not sure they ran the right routes there. But both of them were a little bit ready to break open, so if Aaron could have just uncorked that ball, they might have had a big gain on that play. But they didn't, so they're looking at a long, second and long here. Ian Lee, 983 yards right up to date, and he bumps into his quarterback, but takes the handoff to the 45 to the 40, and he has about uh, nine yards at least on that play, and Homer Center is going to take a timeout, I do believe, and uh, yes, they do. So exactly one minute to play in the first half. Homer Center will have third down and about nine to go when we return to Portage Stadium with Portage leading Homer Center 21 to seven on an Indiana Regional Medical Center High School Sports Night on the 1160 WCCS MSA IUP TV Sports Network. It's the most anticipated concert of the year, a B.E. Taylor Christmas, coming to the Kowalczyk Complex, December 20th. The B.E. Taylor Christmas Concert. Feel the love of Christmas. It's never out of style. Wonder Broadcasting's Teddy Bear Fun Drive, in cooperation with S&T Bank, present a very special evening at the Kowalczyk Complex. Oh, come all ye faithful. December 20th. Where did you know? Come share in this breathtaking celebration of holiday spirit. Tickets are on sale now. So this is Christmas. Tickets for a B.E. Taylor Christmas are on sale now at 1-800-298-4200 or online at kowalczykcomplex.com. The magic of a B.E. Taylor Christmas returns December 20th. Back with you at Portage Stadium, 21 to seven. Tonight's game, also our IUP TV game of the week being brought to you by Octo Multi-Use Sport Grip. If your group plays basketball, baseball, football, or volleyball, you need to give Octo Sport Grip a try. It will give you the same tact and feel you get when uh, you first grip, catch, or throw a brand new leather ball, and it works great on the bottom of your shoes for exceptional court grip. For more information, visit info at OctoGrip. Dot com. Also by Indiana Regional Medical Center, where moments matter. And by Luther Ford Lincoln. If you come to Luther Ford, you'll buy at Luther Ford. Third down and nine, Brzezanski as a timeout, or a flag comes in, and I think that's going to back Homer Center up five yards, and they flinched. They had a little motion, there and, and it looked like the offensive guard jumped. Uh, Johnny Ireland in the game as a receiver. Homer hasn't run, a, and I don't think they're going to do it here. They don't haven't run a screen pass right now, Mark. Uh, it's something that as hard as Portage is coming might work, but I'm sure the Mustangs are looking for that. So uh, this might just be a straight passing route here. From the shotgun, Brzezanski, and he fakes it to Caruso, throws out in the flat to Matt McAdoo, and McAdoo downed at the 40-yard line. And now they're going to say incomplete. Now his knee was down when he caught it. But the official came up uh, back, Judge said incomplete. Where, how could he make that call? But they are, uh, are they going to give him the play award? Yeah, they cuts fourth down. It's, uh, they said. How was that pass I, I, incomplete? I, I, it's a complete pass. The clock's still running, isn't it? Oh, they're saying it's not. No, well, unless we call timeout. Did Homer call timeout? No, it, they ruled it incomplete. The back judge came up and ruled incomplete, or the clock would uh, be running if his knee was down. 
Homer's going to punt this away. That's a not. I'm not sure about that call. Why? How one official from 25 yards away saw it, and the official right on top of the play didn't. Lead a punt. Stands at his own 45, and he takes the uh, snap, and he gets a floating kick away to the 15-yard line. C.W. Miller, left sideline to the 25, to the 30, 35, bang down in front of the Portage bench, bench as he approaches the 40-yard uh, line with 47 seconds remaining. Josh Sisala on the punt coverage team. But uh, Portage, I would not ec uh, expect them to uh, go quietly in this first half, Ward. No, they're going to probably try to score again. They can put this game pretty much away if they can score another point more. And, you know, the, the, the sad thing right now, Homer's D has been unable to stop this offense. And I've been saying you gotta, you got to do this and you got to do that. And that's easy enough for me to say. But we've got to give Portage credit. They are executing that offense, and Homer knew that coming in. They have three timeouts at their disposal and 47 seconds to play in the first half and they lead 21 to 7. Kephart, nope, they give it up the middle. Dividock, huge running room to midfield. He'll gain 10 yards. They'll stop the clock momentarily and Portage is business. I mean, Portage is getting 9, 10, 15 yards on every play. Yeah, and it's it's just opening up for them. They're just doing such a great job. Ball was on the, the 40 to start with. Portage has run 22 plays and they have 222 yards of offense. Timeout on the field called by the Mustangs. 37 seconds remaining. Ball at midfield when we return on an IRMC High School Sports Night on the 1160 WCCS MSA IUP TV Sports Network. I want to say hello to my sister Janice listening on the MSA Sports Network in Philadelphia. I'll say Can't hello believe to she Janice moves too. there. And Kyle and Jack, my <laughs> nephews, and brother in law Russ. Berea boots to his right, throws underneath, dumps it to Dividock, gets by Billy Grzanik. And did Billy just get an arm out to trip him up? He gets to the 46 yard line, and Portage is going to stop the clock again. Luke Molko made the final tackle there. Timeout called by Portage with 27 seconds remaining in the first half. Ward will uh, fire up the uh, computer. 21-14, by the way, Bellwood has cut into that Richland lead. That is a big game, particularly if this one holds and Portage yeah. beats Homer Center because the Wildcats could drop to third place in, uh, in the District 6 Class A rankings. Yeah, and it's, uh, you know, again, it. it it's difficult to gauge. This is definitely an excellent Portage team. Are they better than Homer? Well, you lost two key players from Wildcats. Uh, it, it's not difficult to rate them, but I think it's, it's an even game at, at the very least. And right now, the way Portage is playing, I have to give them the edge. And Homer's uh, defense just unable to, to slow them down at all. Penguins lead Columbus two to nothing. Goals by Chris Kunitz on the power play and Brandon Sutter. Good to see him yeah, he's score for a second straight game. 27 seconds remaining in the first half. Portage second down and six from the Wildcat 46. Giles wingman to the right. Kephart to the left. Dividock the fullback. Inside backers for Homer Center. Back to McLaughlin and uh, Grzanik, and Grzanik has Dividok. Did not fool Homer Center that time. No gain on that play. Now, and, Billy uh, went right at the handoff, and that's what you do. You blow it up. You get right there and pop him every play, whether he has the ball or not. Portage not burning that time out. We're down to the final seconds, and they might uh, let it roll. Berea under center. They get the kickoff. They are going to snap it. He's back to pass. He rolls to his left, and he throws underneath. He has a receiver, Kephart, but he's tackled immediately after a gain of two or three by Grzanik. And the first half 
has come to an end. And the Portage Mustangs have had the better of it, much better of it, to be honest with you. And the Wildcats' adversity with a player ejection and losing on the opening possession, arguably their top player in Mike Newhouse. We're going to come back, recap the first half for you, give you the stats and much more. Our score on an Indiana Regional Medical Center High School Sports Night, Portage Mustangs 21 and the Homer Center Wildcats 7. You're listening to Wildcat Football on the 1160 WCCS MSA IUP TV Sports Network. Howie Bagosa and I am a designer for Disney Interactive Studios. So I design video games, specifically um, Club Penguin, uh, which is a virtual world for kids. And I basically am in charge of creating art assets for this game and basically making the game look fun and exciting and uh, approachable for kids. So I was never an actual graphic design major, but I didn't let that stop me from pursuing what I wanted to do. As a communications media major, I tried to look for mentors to help facilitate the dreams that I wanted to pursue. One of my mentors in particular was Dr. Drew Davidson, and he showed me that not only could I dream about being a graphic designer for video games and working in the video games industry, um, he showed me how to get there, you know, and that was a really big step for me, um, knowing that I had a dream, but also the map and the, the path to walk on to get to, to that position. Going to IUP has helped me, you know, dip my feet into many, many different disciplines and interests, and that has really helped me out a lot um, in my career. You would think that being a dance minor has absolutely nothing to do with anything, right, except dance. But that experience alone at IUP has helped me become an animator for Disney. Getting a sense of timing and movement translates really well from dance to animation. The class sizes at IUP are really small, but sitting uh, in a smaller class and getting a lot of attention from your professor is amazing. Like, it's hard, it's difficult to really engage and absorb the knowledge that a professor gives to you in a large setting. One of the things that I really enjoyed about the small settings was that I was able to find good mentors. Dr. Lambersky, uh, Dr. Drew Davidson, uh, these people have all molded me and shaped me into becoming this fierce, you know, professional and uh, really pursue my dreams. Growing up, 
Our family didn't have a lot of money, and school and college was almost a, a, a pipe dream. IUP gave me that chance. I would not be where I am today if it weren't for the people at my college who placed their faith in me. Find your success at IUP. And this could say a lot about where this game's going, Mark. Ian Lee, squib kick, going to be taken on a hop at the 26-yard line, and Kephart, big hole up the middle, and fortunately for Homer Center, stepping in the lane, Brian Gerhardt, who's been in on a couple of tackles, and uh, Portage will still be uh, in great operating position at their own 45-yard line. Tim Zayak helping out on that. Yeah, that was an excellent run. Kephart did what you're supposed to do. He got it, just took off straight. And if anybody was going to hit him, <laughs> if nobody was going to hit him, he was gone. But uh, fortunately, Wildcats closed that gap. So Portage will open up the first possession of the second half at their own 45-yard line. They come out, Kephart, wingman to the right. Giles to the right, the fullback is Dividoff. Kephart in motion toward the Portage bench. They hand it to him, and dragging him down from behind is Billy Gerzanek right near the line of scrimmage. Nice job by Billy, shooting the gap, coming up behind him and uh, playing a little slow and developing that slowed him and, and held him to no gain on the play. Homer's going to have to make some adjustments, uh, take some chances with their backers, try to put more pressure you know, on, on certainly Brio when he rolls. Second down and 10, line of scrimmage still the 45-yard line. They sent C.W. Miller, who was on a, the receiving end of three of those Michael Berea passes. He was eight for eight. Giles in motion this time. Berea boots to his right. Steps up, throws, has Miller again in Homer Center territory. Tackled at uh, about midfield or so to see where the spot is here. It's going to be the Wildcat 49-yard line. A gain of, nope, they're putting it down right at midfield. So a gain of five. It'll be third down and five for Portage. Opening minute of the second half with the Mustangs leading 21 to 7. Our Mistretta meters at a handicap tonight, Ward, because uh, we got uh, the flagpole when they Can't put the new the scoreboard in. Anyway, if we wanted to give it. <laughs> that should be a project for the, that's the one criticism I have about this place. They need to reposition the flagpole. Yeah, Berea again, now he's 9-9. Nine and nine. And again, these are simple outs, perfect for rollouts as you just run a little out pattern off the rollout. Very hard to stop. Zach Kukar, the receiver to the left boundary, but they give it up the middle to Dividock. Breaks a tackle and he has a first down. If Homer Center tackles him on the initial hit by McLaughlin, I believe it was, and uh, give Dividock credit it. He broke that tackle and Portage moves the chains as he's tackled at the 45 of Homer Center. Needed five, got five. Timidock not particularly big but a solid inside runner and he's been really a pain for, for Homer Center getting all, 100 yards there in the first half. All of that pretty much straight up the middle. How would you like to build next year's team around Michael Berea, Luke Dividock, and Caleb Kephart? Yep. They're all back. Yeah. That so. is 1600... Uh, about 2,600 yards of offense that will return next year. Kind of magnifies the loss of, uh, of a new house, though. The Homer offense is built around him. Kephart, they uh, bring him in motion, but uh, Berea back to pass all kind of time, throws a duck, his first incompletion of the night. Caruso on the coverage, but he simply uh, pulled the string on it. Randazzo, the tight end, who came into today's game with 12 receptions was the intended receiver, but that time Berea just misfired. You know, the key to stopping this passing attack too is to eliminate the Miller, uh, first of all. You take one of the receivers out of the offense and that, you do that with a man, man-to-man -man coverage. And I don't know if Homer's guys are, are, are strong enough to do that, you know, to cover him man-to-man -man and eliminate him. That's how Northern Cambria beat this team last year. Our spotter in the booth, Dennis Mester, said that pass was deflected, so that's why. Inside reverse to uh, Kephart. He is clobbered by Matt McAdoo and Cody Miller. 
And down he goes back at the 46 yard line for a loss of a yard. And Portage will be faced with a third down and 11 from the Wildcat 46 in the opening two minutes of this third quarter with the Mustangs leading 21-7. Third and long here again. You, you got to take the fullback out, and then you, you got to put pressure on the quarterback. So somebody's got to come blitzing in there. C.W. Miller shuttles the play in from head coach Gary Gauss. Gauss in his 23rd season, 166 and 56, winning at a 75 percent clip. Oh, yeah, it's been terrific out here. They put Giles in motion. And Berea back to pass, stands tall in the pocket, throws the home run ball, and it is incomplete. No flag on the play, or at least I don't see one. Oh, there shouldn't have been. Great job by Inley. He stayed between the receiver and the ball, and, uh, he just, uh, didn't, uh, and uh, Berea just didn't have enough on the ball to get it to him. Good job by Homer's defense that time. Still, they got to get more pressure. I think if they could get to Berea a few times, they might get a pick. 46 yard line and I think they're gonna have to punt it for the first time they do the punter is Ben Herman he's punted 19 times very good average of over 38 yards per punt Imidoxi up man be alert to a correct snap long snappers Max Gossard and the kick is away it's a wobbler Brzezanski takes it and fumbles the football at the 20-yard line, and I think the Mustangs have it. They do. What can go wrong is going wrong for Homer Center. Wow. We haven't seen that from the Wildcats all year. Uh, you know, they had a chance to turn momentum. Simple thing, Aaron just tried to catch the ball away from his body. Reached out with his hands and just shot an alligator armed it. And I think folks that know what I'm talking about, and, he just never had a chance. There were two defenders right there. And, and that was them. a kind of a wobbler to yeah, begin with. You need to get under those and, and cradle it into your chest. At the 21 yard line, they put it down. I'm not sure who recovered that punt for Portage. Our spotter has his trip to camp in mind instead of his, we're gonna fire Dennis Mester. You got a little equipment uh, shoe problem out there for Portage player to help See if, uh, our statistician in the booth, Jerry Rossi, has an update from Richland when we get a chance. It was 21-14. That game has big uh, implications now if this one stays the way it is. That's a huge turnover by the Wildcats. Randazzo is the fullback. And they give it to Randazzo up the middle. Homer Center defenses it pretty nicely. Jimmy Bentz on the tackle for Homer Center. A long with Lucas Monko. A gain of about three yards to the 18 yard line. Bence is banged up. His shoulder's hurting him a little bit. I saw him flexing Who, who is that, early. Bence? But he's uh, still in the ball game. Homer has uh, been getting, getting through the season pretty well here without injuries. But uh, tonight, not so hot. Second down and seven to go from the Wildcat 18 yard line. Dividock the fullback. Kephart in motion, Berea back to pass, boots to his left, throws, has a man, and a nice catch on the far side of the field at the five yard line. John Ireland makes the tackle on C.W. Miller, and C.W. has been an H.C. thorn tonight. Well, that's why you cover him one on one. You take him out of the offense, but you've got to have a player capable of doing that, and again, it's not a criticism, it's just that some players, some teams just don't have a kid that's good enough to eliminate a receiver like that. He's He's running simple routes, but he's getting himself separation and open. And you got to give Brian all the credit. He's getting the ball there, Mark. First and goal from the Wildcats six yard line. Kephart in motion, but they give it up the middle. And it's Dividock, and Dividock from one side of the five to the other. That's about all. Pretty good interior defense Dividock by the, the Wildcats that time. Brought down by Bill, Billy Grzanek on the stop for the Homer Center Wildcats. They put it down at the four. It'll be second down and goal. Realistically, this is the ball game. Homer cannot keep them out of the end zone. I, I don't think they've got the capability of coming back and getting three scores, uh, especially with Mike Newhouse not on the field. They break Cotto out over the football's big six foot, 295 pound center, Joe Beyer. Wing right is Dividock, Rendazzo in the backfield. 
and they give it to Randazzo, lowers the shoulder, tries to get to the goal line. He might have fumbled the football. I think he did, and Homer Center has it. So the Mustangs return the favor. Did it go into the end zone? That would be a break for Homer Center if it ends up being recovered in the end zone, and they start at the 20, but I don't think that's going to be the case. The officials are now conferring on the field, and let's see what they say. They're going to give the ball to Portage? Oh, they couldn't. They get Matt McAdoo clearly had the football. That ball came out it's on the hit. Oh, my. Greg Page oh can't my. believe it. Well, you know when you come up here, sometimes that stuff happens. Oh, my. Well, it came uh, loose. Well, I don't know. I thought it came loose on the hit because the scramble occurred there as soon as he hit into the line, which tells me the ball was loose. At the one-yard oh, line my. as a result. They, I don't know. Dividock in the backfield, and Portage needs a timeout as the play clock was reaching zero, and I don't think they called it in time. But they overruled the fumble. Well, Maybe they'll overrule the delay yeah, of game. They well picked that one up. There's no there we go. <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> so a timeout on the field with 8.55 to play in the third quarter. Portage a yard away from extending a 21-7 lead over Homer Center on an IRMC High School Sports Night on the 1160 WCCS MSA Sports Network. Out of the Portage timeout, quarterback keeper up the middle, and Michael Berea has a Portage touchdown. From a yard out, Berea, just his fourth rushing touchdown. He's only carried for 37 yards, but uh, it's 27-7 Mustangs, and they have complete control of this football game. Yeah, Mike, uh, uh, Jimmy Bitts is, is starting out there. I'm watching him there. He's holding his arm. Shoulder is aching. He's still trying to gut it out. And it looks like uh, Lutz is back in the ball game. Or am I? Yep, 44 is He is there. back, so yep. He's okay. Turn words, Mike up. We were getting uh, some comments here from the booth over there that apparently that was a legitimate call on on the uh, ejection, so. Uh, Berea puts the snap down and the kick from Lutz is up and the kick is good. It's Portage 28 and the Homer Center Wildcats seven. Not what we expected tonight from Portage Mustang, not in this fashion at least. Indiana Regional Medical Center High School Sports Night continues with the score. Mustangs 28, Homer Center seven on the 1160 WCCS MSA IUP TV Sports Network.
Back with you, Nick Lutz has it teed up for Portage. Five play, 21 yards, two minutes, 45 seconds. Wood Chevrolet drive summary where a wood deal is a good deal. Brzezanski takes the kickoff at the 15, out over the 20 to the 25, through an opening at the 35 to the 40. The kicker to catch him at the 45 and Portage. The 30, left sideline, tackled from behind by Chris Onder at the 20-yard line. They put him out at the 19-yard line. Excellent return of about 70. One yards, I believe, for Aaron Brzezanski. 66 officially, Jerry Rossside tells me. From the 15-yard line? No quit in there, and is there? You know, he caught that. He felt bad about fumbling that punt. Well, he had determination on his mind there. Excellent return. Homer needs to put this in to have any chance in this football game. From the Portage. 19-yard line, trips to the right. They hand it to McAdoo, through a little opening to the 15-yard line. He'll gain four, tripped up on the play by Caleb Kephart of the Portage Mustangs. That's a touchdown if Kephart doesn't get him. Uh, everything was influenced to the right with the flankers, and uh, they just tried to plop, pop Matt up the middle on that left side. Kephart would have none of it. 28-7, Portage, 6-15 to play in the third quarter. Ball on the left hash, Homer Center operating right to left as we view it. Eye formation, offset eye for the Cats. Lee takes the handoff right up the gut and he stumbles ahead for a couple. Lee was tripped up, coming in low for the Portage Mustangs was the inside linebacker, Kyle Davis. And they're gonna put Ian down at the 13 yard line. Homer's offensive line needs to fire out more now. That This is an opportunity for him to get back in this football game. And that's the one thing that hasn't been disrupted with injuries is the offensive line, so they need to get after it. Excellent sound system here at Portage Stadium. They have a graphic make noise on the scoreboard on the Jumbotron. Excellent atmosphere here at this old yard. Third down and four, play action. Brzezanski boots to his right and they tackle him as a horse collar flag comes in, I believe. Pass incomplete, intended for Caruso, but I think we're gonna have a high tackle, either a face mask or a horse collar. Ward? Yeah, I, I, I believe it's a horse collar just from the way the defender grabbed him from behind. He was trying to get away from him and <laughs> Portage player grabbed and threw him down. Let's see, it's definitely on Portage, just a matter of where they're going to mark it and how much. Face mask, well, I was wrong again. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's, I don't know, it, it gave him a five yarder. Uh, I thought, well, is that half the distance? Yeah, the, uh, it's an automatic first anyway. But. Yep, well, the line of scrimmage was the 13, so it's after the incompletion, just a straight five yard mark off, but it is enough for a first down for Homer Center. First and goal from the Portage eight. We've had a lot of first and goals from the eight. Unfortunately, yeah. the first couple have been for Portage. <laughs> yeah, most of them have been for Portage here. In the backfield, Ian Lee, Matt McAdoo, wingman left Caruso. And it's a toss left to Ian Lee. Lee following his blocks to the five, forced out of bounds. Will depend on the spot near side, a lot of congestion. Looks to be inside the five yard line, but let's wait and see. We'll see where they put it down. I'm going to be close to the three-yard line. So Ian gets five on that play. Joe Randazzo, the inside linebacker, who came into tonight's game leading the Mustangs with 49 tackles. He made that one. And the Wildcats now three yards away. Yeah, it's a, a, a nice job there of Forty just, just stretching that out. Caruso joins the backfield. McAdoo, the fullback. Dotting the eye is Lee, and they give on a counter to Lee off the right side. A yard, maybe two down close to the one yard line. The Wildcats that close to cutting into the lead. Brandon Vaco made the tackle. Left tackle, six foot, 255 pound junior. This place they really miss Mike Newhouse. He's strong enough to get through those little gaps there and just drag players into the end zone. Homer is third down, about two. Yeah, closer, closer to the two than it is the one, that's for sure. They come out with a straight eye, double tights. Brzezanski sends Caruso in motion behind the formation. 
They give to McAdoo off the left side. He's into the end zone for a Wildcat touchdown. Matt McAdoo has his second touchdown of the night. And the Wildcats make it 28 to 13. 3.47 to play in the third quarter. It's a nice job again, everybody on 42. Kind of keying a little bit on Ian Lee. And Matt just took the first hand off there. Nice, nice play execution by Homer Center. Lee to attempt the extra point out of the hold of Brzezanski and the kick either blocked or he just kicked it too high. It's no good and the kick fails. So it's 28-13 as the teams come up field. Homer Center, they uh, drive the short field set up by the Brzezanski 66 yard kickoff return. McAdoo's second touchdown of the night and sixth rushing touchdown of the season. It's 28-13 Portage on an Indiana Regional Medical Center High School Sports Night on the 1160 WCCS MSA Sports Network. It's the most anticipated concert of the year, a B.E. Taylor Christmas, coming to the Kowalczyk Complex, December 20th. The B.E. Taylor Christmas Concert. Feel the love of Christmas, it's never out of style. Brenda Broadcasting's Teddy Bear Fun Drive, in cooperation with S&T Bank, present a very special evening at the Kowalczyk Complex. December 20th. Come share in this breathtaking celebration of holiday spirit. Tickets are on sale now. So this is Christmas. Tickets for a B.E. Taylor Christmas are on sale now at 1-800-298-4200 or online at kabalchicomplex.com. The magic of a B.E. Taylor Christmas returns December 20th. Ian Lee has it teed up. Wildcat drive, six plays, 19 yards, took 251. Wood Chevrolet, where Wood Dill's a good deal. Squib kick, and it's downed by Randazzo. I'm not sure why he, uh, as his, with his experience running the football, took it took basically tackled himself at the 40 when he had plenty of room to advance the ball. I'm not sure an onside kick or just a squib that uh, went awry. I think awry. that's the way Helmer's been kicking there. If it was an onside, I think they'd have had a little better pursuit on it, and it wouldn't have gone quite so far, Mark. The no, officials uh, are conferring. I don't know that any time ran off the clock is the uh, issue. Although four seconds ran off the clock from 347 to 343. Unless that's, oh no, it's 33. That's probably the issue. Too much time ran off the clock. As they crank up on the PA system, what's going on? They're going to reset the clock. 45, that's a lot of time it ran off the clock. Two seconds now. So Portage will start at their own 40-yard line. Yeah, it was the time of the touchdown was 3.47, so they're saying only two seconds went off of the clock. On that kickoff, Randazzo did down himself rather quickly, although I'm not sure why. He worried about the fumble, he didn't get caught. <laughs> Dibidoc, the fullback, gets the handoff, and Homer Center has him, and down he goes. He almost broke that tackle from the point of contain. Matt McAdoo made the tackle, a gain of a yard to the 41 for Dibidoc. I think Billy Grazani kind of uh, initially made the hit and he bounced off of that and then he was wrapped up by uh, Benson McAdoo out there. Second down and nine, Michael Berea, the big, tall, lean uh, junior quarterback back into the huddle as he heads over to Gary Giles and got the play and brings it back in himself. Wildcats need something spectacular to happen here, Mark. Get some momentum early back in their camp. Second down and nine. Berea booting to his left, sets up shop all kind of time. Look at the time. Rolls toward the left sideline and he's forced out of bounds by Billy Grzanik. And uh, gonna be no gain, maybe even a loss on the play. Naturally the sideline there is reacting. They want a flag. And I don't know, they may have got one. I didn't see one over there. Though. I don't think so. Should be no flag on that. Loss of a yard back to the 40-yard line. Grzanik forced him out of bounds. 
It'll be third down and 10 for the Mustangs. So the Wildcats again with a chance to get the defense off the field. Now yeah, they're double blocking Cody Miller every time he rolls that way. So they need to put pressure from the deep corner to come up. Third down and 10, Berea's been fantastic all night long. And he's booting to the short side again. Throws out the right flat to Kephart. Kephart now heading toward the far side of the field. And Wildcats defense it nicely. Ian Lee makes the tackle. A lot of running, but only about a yard gain for Kephart. Looked to be screen right ward, and the Wildcats read it well. Yeah, Kephart saw that it wasn't going anywhere right, so he tried to reverse his field. That's usually bad news for everybody, but not by Ian Lee. He stayed home. He was there, and he made a good play. And Homer, it appears, is going to force a punt here. And, uh, you know, defensively, they're starting to, uh, to, to get it together a little bit. Uh, Homer, get another drive. We could have a football game yet. Still 21-14, Richland leading Bellwood. Juniata Valley losing to Huntington. I thought that might happen tonight. I don't have a score, but uh, that could uh, change things in the District 6 rankings, too. That would get Blairsville into the playoffs, I would think, even uh, if everything else holds. Now they're clock problems again, and the referee trying to get it sorted out. What's on the clock, Dennis? Can you see it? You have to go outside to look around the flagpole. 338 or is that 230? Two, now they put 243 back on the clock. Is this the same punter, Mark? I, I can't yeah, it is. It's uh, Ben Herman. Okay, I'm always watching out for the fake here, so Homer needs to be alert to that. Brzezanski and Ian Lee back deep. Ian, two punt returns for TDs this year. They kick away from him. It's a short kick, and Brzezanski's going to back off, and it's going to roll dead at the 26-yard line of Homer Center. Good move so by a 31-yard uh, yeah, punt with no return. Kind of kicked in a dead space there. And Aaron Wise just to let it die and, to, and not do anything as foolish. Homer needs to put together a, a rather lengthy drive, but they need to do that. Johnny Ireland is coming into the ball game, so uh, they're going to use him as a receiver. Steve McLaughlin, who's played a good game. You know, Steven's been all over the field covering for guys who are either hurt or have been uh, kicked out. <laughs> Shotgun, Mark. Sidecar to, to the right of Brzezanski is Matt McAdoo. And he takes the snap, he hands it off to McAdoo, and it's clogged up pretty good. Matt, a couple of tough yards up to about the 28-yard line. McAdoo on the, on the stop for the right Portage Mustangs was Brandon Bucko. I'm a little confused the in the alignment there. I think might have had something to do with the timing there. Play just never had a chance to get going. Just a two-yard pickup. They're hanging tough. I give these guys credit. You know, you, you lose your principal offensive player. We've said all year long, Mike Newhouse is the big gun. Not to mention your principal linebacker. Yeah. Or one of them. Well, yeah, either way, but he's it's a big hole. Second and eight, Brzezanski turns hands to Lee, tries getting to the right corner. Lee to the 30, to the 35, 40, and he's forced out of bounds. Nice defensive play by Dividock to force him out of bounds for the Mustangs, but the Wildcats are going to move the chains, and this football game is not over. They're down by 15, and uh, they've kind of settled in here a little bit in the second half. They're playing much better despite all of this adversity. Yeah, that's true, and uh, you know, Ian Lee there, a good move there. He set up that defender. Wasn't well blocked out there. Ian took the guy on, put him a little shoulder fake, got around him. He had a little more field over there. He might have popped that one. First and 10 Wildcats from their own 40-yard line. Toss left, and it's McAdoo, and it's strung out by Portage, and McAdoo's going to lose about three yards. Defensively, Caleb Kephart, and the guy that really strung it out Ward, was the inside linebacker, Kyle Davis. Uh, again, this is where they miss Colby Skullteddy. He does such a nice job out there and screening those sweeps off. But uh, again, he's not on the field. So Homer, uh, you know, when they make calls offensively, they've got to they've got to count for that. They put it down at the 37-yard line. Cambria Heights now leads Northern Cambria 17 to seven. They reposition. The wing, actually tight end, it's uh, Bents on the right side, kind of an unbalanced line again, and Brzezanski's going to keep it. Near side, he's met 
and dropped as he gets to the 40, maybe the 41. Randazzo did an excellent job of staying home for the Mustangs. Was not fooled at all as Aaron came to the short side of the field without a lot of help. No, I mean, that play is designed to, for, for the defense to kind of suck in on the play fake and Aaron get to the corner, and uh, they didn't suck in. As simple as that. Good job by Randazzo. The only option you have there is maybe to pull up and throw, but going to your left, that's very difficult to do. Under 30 seconds to play in the third quarter, 28-13 Portage. Wildcats face third down and nine from their own 41-yard line. Brzezanski, 37-57. Seven touchdowns, only one interception entering tonight's game. He boots to his right. He throws a sideline ball, and it's incomplete. Good coverage. Kind of uh, uh, Kephart and C.W. Miller had the intended receiver sandwiched, and Bentz just couldn't get a good eye on that football. Well, it's a little too high. And I thought he might have had Caruso open in the slot area down there, but that's, you know, it's, that's hard to say. From up here, it's a lot easier to see these guys than it is when you're down there. Juniata Valley hanging in, in there with Huntington. It's 21-15. Huntington, that game is at Huntington. They're double A, but Juniata Valley really needs a win tonight, although Northern Cambria loses, and the snap is over Ian Lee's head, and he picks it up inside his 15-yard line, and he kicks it, and it's an end-over-end -end kick, and Kephart has to allow it to roll, and it ends up not being not too bad of a deal, That's a all good things kick. considered, because he kicked it from about the 15-yard line, and it rolls dead at the 35, so it ends up being a 24-yard punt with no return, and Portage will take over, and I think there's no time on the clock. That's the end of the third quarter. Indiana Regional Medical Center High School Sports Night coverage continues with the score Portage 28 and the Homer Center Wildcats 13 on 1160 WCCS, the MSA Sports Network and IUP TV. All your professors, all of them, they know that all it takes is one dreamer with passion, one person, and they hope in each of you that you might be that one who makes a longer lasting light bulb, who writes music for the ages, who reaches into the mind and discovers a new star and who can change the world of a fifth grader. We're gathered here to hope in you. Portage starts at their own 35-yard line, and they give it up the middle. And with the football is the fullback, Luke Dividock, and he has a yard or so up to, let's see if they're going to give him the 37-yard line or not for the Homer Center Wildcats. Stephen McLaughlin on that tackle for the Wildcats. They do give him the 37. It'll be second down and eight. Looks like Steve's back in the inside linebacker spot with Jimmy Bentz back on the field. I'm telling you, he's been all over the place. Our dietitian on the traveling crew, Bill Rakoski, doing some food sampling tonight. Toss, uh, it is a toss right to Kephart. I read uh, oh, Gary Giles' uh, mind, and he's in the loose. Down the right sideline, spun around by Ireland. He breaks that tackle, and he's going to take it the distance. No, they're going to say he stepped out of bounds at about the 32-yard line of Homer Center. I thought Matt 31 McAdoo, yards on that carry. He ran by Matt McAdoo, and I, I tell you, I, I'm way up here. I can't tell, but I could have swore he got held there, but uh, no call. That's when those sweeps work. <laughs> you eliminate that. That's one of the few times that Matt McAdoo has been blocked out of a play. Football at the Wildcat 32-yard line, opening minute of the second or uh, fourth quarter. Obviously, Homer can ill afford to give up any more points. They need a stop. 31-yard gain for Kephart. First and 10 from the HC 32-yard line. We'll have playoff football at Memorial Field next weekend. We just don't know if it'll be Friday night or Saturday night. Berea under center, Joe Beyer. Sends Kephart in motion, toss left this time, and he has some running room. Through an opening to the 25, down to the 21-yard line. Jimmy Bentz on the stop for the Homer Center Wildcats, but he rips off 11 yards. Well, make it 10, but it is good for a first down or not. They're going to bring the chains in. Nope, the referee says first down. First down. 
tired homer defense out there. They haven't had to endure this kind of uh, attack all year long, I don't think, and it, it's uh, this, starting to wear on them a little this bit. This is a big score just coming in courtesy of Doug McNulty, who's been sending me some scores. Um, Richland is now leading Bellwood Annis 28 to 14. That's big because Homer Center would, even with a loss, would stay at a second seed and play Friday night instead of Saturday, although plenty of time to go over at Richland Stadium. Kephart in motion again, toss right. Right, left, back to the right. He cuts it back to the 15, and he just uh, continues to move the legs down close to the 11-yard line, and I think he may have enough for another first down. Ward, it's been Kephart right, Kephart left, Kephart right, and against a worn-out Homer Center defense, not to mention a shorthanded defense. Portage doing an excellent job, though. Coach, F or Coach Page has talked about them the, the, the holding their blocks, and you can see in these tosses, they're getting out on the bend and they're, they're holding those blocks. They're controlling the defender and that's allowing Kephart to find gaps, and turn it upfield. You gotta get rid of that guy, but that's easier said than done. Hordy's excellent technique. 10 minutes to play in the football game. First and 10 Portage from the Wildcat 11 yard line. Dividok the fullback. And they give it up the middle. Dividok breaks one tackle, and down he goes. As a flag comes in from the line, Judge, 30 yards away, or technically 25, and the public address announcer says face mask without the referee signaling anything. <laughs> Cody Miller made the stop for the Homer Center Wildcats. It is a face mask, but Ward, I'm amazed that there's two officials, including the referee, standing right there, and the line judge, yeah. a football field is 53 yards wide. That wasn't even the line judge, he's the back judge. Or was it the back yeah, judge? Yeah, the line judge is down here. He was actually in the end zone. And well, either way, he's about 27 <laughs> yards from the play, and he's the one that throws the flag. But I'm not saying it wasn't a flag, but my goodness, there's two guys within five yards of the tackle being made. First uh, and goal after the well, five-yard mark-off. You wonder what they saw, though, or didn't see, that he did see. Now, he did see a face, man. It looked like it might have been from up here. Can't argue it. His head turned a little, so uh, I'm sure that was. It's just curious the way that call was made. First and goal. Ah, such is life here. From the five-yard line of Homer Center. As Portage looks to regain total control of the football game. Berea. Gives to Kephart, Kephart cuts it back, good defense, nothing doing. I don't even know that he got back to the line of scrimmage. Well, that was a messed assignment. There were two Wildcats just sitting there waiting on him. He wasn't going anywhere. Cody Miller again for Homer Center. Cody's been a yeah, he's standout here tonight, again with a shorthanded defense. He's, uh, he's been taking on two blockers on every rollout. And uh, they, they've done good, uh, Portage X does an excellent job of executing their offense and what they're trying to do out there. Portage knocked Homer Center out of the playoffs last year, 20 to 14 in the season finale. They're not gonna do that this year. They are gonna put an end to uh, dream a of wonderful an wonderful season though, aren't they? Uh, the dream of an unbeaten season. Toss right, Kephart cuts it back at the five. He's met and down he goes. Cody Miller again on the stop for the Homer Center Wildcats. Maybe got to the three yard line. We're gonna see where they put the football down. It is gonna be at the three, actually at the two. Now, the, the line judge is standing at the three and the, the, ref, the uh, official who spots the ball backs up and puts it down at the two. I just don't understand it. <laughs> it's close enough. Uh, the scoreboard has third three, so they think it's a three. Well, it's definitely at the two yard line. Joe Byer out over the football. Homer tried to come with an inside blitz that time, Mark. They did a nice job of getting to the edge, too. Third down, and they give it to Dividock up the middle. I don't know that he got in. No well, signal yet. It's going to be fourth down. Randazzo, the fullback, and now referee blows the whistle. And uh, what's... Oh, it's a first down. Oh, they, they could get, get a get first a, down. Oh, boy, I didn't know that. I wasn't even looking there. My bad. 
Portage there within the half a yard of the, the goal line. First and goal on the one yard line. Bad exchange is about all the Wildcats can hope for here. They have battled hard in there, but just, uh, just didn't have enough firepower when you lose a couple of your key weapons. First and goal, Randazzo, the fullback. Berea puts Kephart in motion, but he gives to Randazzo up the middle. Touchdown, Portage Mustangs. As a flag comes in, two flags come in. And it is 34 to 13 Mustangs, and we'll see what the penalty is all about. Randazzo, one yard touchdown run. I'm sure, I'm sure there was some uh, extracurricular in the end zone. And it, it undoubtedly was against the Wildcats. Randazzo on the score for the Mustangs. Frustration. Lutz to attempt the extra point. Cambria Heights, uh, Northern Cambria is cut into the lead at 17-13. Unsportsmanlike on Homer Center is the call. Unsportsmanlike on Portage, so offsetting there. It's going to be enforced on the kickoff. Oh, is that what he said? Oh, I, thought, I thought I saw him point the other direction for uh, offsetting. No, that isn't going to happen here. Uh, <laughs> it is on the Wildcats, and the Cats have to be careful, Mark. They can't have any other silly penalty or another ejection comes up because they got a game next week. Lutz to attempt the extra point out of the hole to Berea, and the kick is through the uprights. It is good. 7-19 to play in the football game. All Portage, it's 35-13 Mustangs over the Homer Center Wildcats. We'll come back with a Portage kickoff after this on the 1160 WCCS MSA Sports Network. This week's game is sponsored by Luther Ford Lincoln. Well, after the penalty, they'll kick off from the 45-yard line of Homer Center. Out of town scoreboard, all Blairsville tonight, 40-6 to over Meshannon Valley. Indiana and Ringgold tied at 7. Cambria Heights, 17-13 over Northern Cambria. Colts could need that to stay in the playoff hunt. We'll try to sort that out on our postgame show. 35-13 to here. We'll give you the Wood uh, Chevrolet drive summary. The kick through the hands of Ireland, but picked up by the Wildcats. And Randazzo, it's uh, Sasela on the return, and he's going to be tackled at about the 20 or 21 yard line. So they're going to say he's up to about the 23 yard line where the Wildcats will take over. And big thing now, Ward, is just keep your head about yourself. Uh, don't be suck in, sucked into any extracurriculars. <laughs> yeah, that's and for sure. get out of here with everybody as healthy as you can. I mean, yeah. that, that's about what you're reduced to, trailing 35 to 13 yeah, with 7-13 yeah, on the clock. For folks who don't understand that, uh, the ejection re re ends, results in you being eliminated from playing in the following game. So next week, Colby School said he's going to have to sit. Brzezanski picks up a low snap and he's going to keep it. He's through an opening. Onder has him, but he breaks a tackle and he's up to the 40 yard line. Onder had him at the 35. Great uh, effort by Brzezanski, who rushes for about 18 yards to the 40. And Greg Page saying, I think I saw a face well, there mask was. there. there was, it wasn't a jerk on it, but he raked his hand across it, and that is a penalty, not called. Uh, so uh, Greg, a little upset. That's a little frustration, too. Nice job by Aaron, though. He is still scrapping out there. Greg Page's father, Jerry Page, played on this field in the 1940s. How about that? And Buff Fanella was an assistant coach, former Wildcat coach. Yep. From the shotgun, and again, the snap is low. I'm not sure if Cody uh, or if uh, Sean Steffi is still in there. Yeah, he's in there. and I'm not sure what's going on there with Sean. He's... Usually really reliable. They lose three yards, and I think McAdoo picked that up, didn't he? Yeah. I think Sean's banged up a little. I see him kind of punching over out there. So he may have uh, had his hand hurt. Yeah, that could be. We saw, didn't realize that uh, League of Valley's center was snapping with his opposite hand when they played Homer uh, that was Center. Penn's Manor. Or Penn's Manor yeah, was, yeah. Last week, yeah. 
pistol formation. McAdoo behind Brzezanski. This snaps a little better. Rolls to his left. Throws sideline, and it's caught by Johnny Ireland. I think that's his first reception of the season to midfield and close to a first down. Nice catch by a nice pass, nice reception. They are short, but uh, only by about a yard there. Going to be third down and one right at midfield. My other goal for tonight is I hope the, the buffet is still open at the end of the game. You guys have been <laughs> killing me. I don't know if you're going to have much luck there. Nice job again. I uh, hope a little slow in development, but uh, nevertheless, good pass. We'll tell you about the uh, tradition here in the beautiful press box here with <laughs> Superintendent Benazzotti. Here's the wide receiver screen to Caruso. Has a first down and he's hit from behind at the 40 of Portage. Picks up 10 yards or so. Inside linebacker Kyle Davis made the tackle for the Mustangs at the 39. They have a different theme, themed menu with every home game. And the superintendent told me that the last home game is always soup night, which <laughs> means four different kinds of soups, a variety of sandwiches, and homemade desserts. Uh, they were there. Everything you said was there. And they have a refrigerator, and they even had homemade pumpkin pie, and they had the whipped cream and all whipped up in the uh, yeah, refrigerator. Eat, eat your heart out. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what. That's gone. We're going to have to talk to Dr. Corin. <laughs> <laughs> they give it to McAdoo. Stutter steps through a little opening off of left tackle. Caleb Kephart tackled him for the Mustangs at the 35. So Homer Center picks up uh, four yards. An official timeout is an equipment adjustment for Anthony Caruso. We'd like to tell you that IRMC at Chestnut Ridge is a proud sponsor of Homer Center Sports. Urgent Care is open seven days a week, tomorrow and Sunday from nine to five to treat minor illnesses, bumps and bruises, and some Wildcats may be heading down to Chestnut Ridge yeah, tomorrow, Ward. It's been a rough, it's been a hard hitting ball game. This had the playoff atmosphere. Homer, however, a uh, couple players short. From the shotgun with a sidecar to the right, McAdoo, Brzezanski takes the snap, sets up, throws over the middle, batted down. Defensively making that play was Brandon Vocco, one of the linemen. They just announced the score, Bellwood trailing Richland now 35 to 14. That game is big for Homer Center because a Bellwood loss, they entered the uh, weekend in second place in the District 6 standings. Homer Center, we knew could not drop for, uh, farther than third place. And now with Bellwood apparently on their way to a loss, they will stay at second place and their playoff game will be next Friday night. Let's hope. <laughs> Let's hope. Now we have a timeout. Let's see. Called by Homer Center. It is. Is that 524 guys down below us? 524 remaining in the football game as the flagpole blocks our view. 35 13 Portage over the Wildcats. You're listening to an IRMC High School Sports Night on the 1160 WCCS MSA Sports Network. This week's game is sponsored by Indiana Regional Medical Center. All right, back with you. Third down and seven for Homer Center from the Portage 36. Brzezanski back to pass, throws, caught by Sasala at the 30 to the 25, tackled at about the 22-yard line. On the stop for Portage was Luke Dividock, but the Wildcats have enough to move the chains. Nice job by Josh to sail in the game for uh, Ian Lee. We're not sure what might be going on with Ian. He First looks all right. He's center. he's walking around on the sidelines, but uh, might just be protecting him more. Yeah, for whatever reason. And you know, we did hear some rumors that some of these teams, like Richland, might have uh, wanted to take care of some people and not play them. Well, if that's the case, look out because they're putting a whooping on Bellwood, and that from, ain't easy. From the gun again with the side car to the left, and Brzezanski going to keep it following the block of McAdoo, trying to get to the corner, and he can't do it. Good defense by Portage, and an injury as Caruso is down. There's a flag in the and end zone. And a flag zone in the end zone. Well, I don't know what that's all about. Completely away from the play. Anthony, good news, is up off uh, onto his feet under his own power. Not limping. Holy smokes. Of course, he's been playing with that gimpy knee with a partially torn ACL, which is incredible. I'm curious what happened in the end zone here. 
Johnny Ireland is back here as a receiver. And I don't know, um, they're... And a lot of talking. I see a lot of the Portage guys have been talking this entire game, you know, and that probably contributes to some of the chippiness. But Personal foul on Portage. They uh, uh, threw Ireland down after the play was oh, over. So they're going to move the football now closer. Why, why is that any less... So, uh, never mind. I don't even want to go there. We lost a player because of something that silly. And... Uh, C.W. Miller was the uh, guilty party, but no ejection there. And I didn't see it. I'm not saying there should have been, no, I didn't but see it is one. first and goal but, uh, at the 11. That's as significant as what happened uh, with Homer Senna. But again, it's good for talking. Homer setting up shop. They got to give them credit. They have been battling here. Kind of undermanned, but still fighting it out here. Proud team. First down and 10 from the Portage 11. Josh Sasela, or is that Monteo Coleman? It's Coleman, but they hand it to McAdoo. McAdoo, hard running, was hit by Randazzo near the line of scrimmage, bounced off of that tackle, and moved ahead for about five yards or so. We'll see where they put the football down. Kyle Davis on the tackle for the Mustangs. They list him at 5'5", 175. <laughs> Yeah, and you know what? I I honestly don't see anybody out there quite that short. Well, he's pretty short. He's right in the middle. But he looks taller than 5'5". Five, five. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He, he doesn't look much taller than the other guys. From the six-yard line of the Mustangs, five-yard gain, and Brzezanski going to keep it. Brzezanski breaks a tackle, cuts it back, and the ball is loose, but they're going to rule him down at about the two-yard line. And it's going to be close to a first down, I think a yard shy. Brzezanski on the carry. As we roll under, is that the four minutes, 450? Three. 350 yeah. clock running, 35-13 Mustangs. Looks like the Wildcats will host a first round playoff game next Friday. Should they win that, they would also host a second round playoff game in uh, get ready for the District 6 championship. But uh, there's a lot of things yeah, to do. You're really going way ahead here. We got kids banged up. Jimmy Benz got up slow again. He's going to sleep good tonight, and he's going to be in somebody's spa tomorrow trying to heal up. Lone setback is McAdoo, who has Homer Center's two touchdowns. Caruso in motion. They give to McAdoo, slants off the left side. No signal for a touchdown yet, but he does have a first down. And it'll be first and goal for the Wildcats inside the one-yard line. They just made it fourth down on the uh, stick here, though. So they're, having, they're going to measure this. They're gonna wow, that must be awfully close. Well, I'll say that. Well, maybe I'm pre obviously I'm premature on my first and goal from the one. It's been a good drive for Homer Center. I had to start them at the 20-foot one of the, of, uh, the Wildcats. Yeah, they're short. short. Well, my apologies. I thought for sure he had the I first down. He, he went through sure, that gap. Down. Fourth down, less than a yard from evidently outside the one yard line. <laughs> it, is, it is very close. Wildcats break huddle. Tommy Rohrer, the right guard, beside center Sean Steffi. Brzezanski turns, hands it off. Caruso, touchdown, Homer Center. With 2.58 to play in the football game, the Homer Center Wildcats make it 35 to 19 over the, well, not over, I wish it was over. They uh, trail the Portage Mustangs 35 19 as Caruso. Scores his first rushing touchdown of the season. Yeah, Homer got one with a backfield here of primarily JV players now with Ian Lee on the side and uh, Coach Page putting in some other linemen. They're going to go for two, obviously. I can see them try to get Anthony Caruso isolated out here one on one, do a little. One thing break. about uh, Anthony tonight with all of the. Uh, Injuries and he's getting uh, and he's running the Wildcat right now. He's getting a lot of backfield time back to his junior high days. But they snap it to McAdoo, not Caruso, and McAdoo 
Did he get in? No. The official says no. He right tripped up just short. Near the goal line. He is stopped short. So it's 35-19 Portage. They lead by 16. Indiana Regional Medical Center High School Sports Night coverage continues on 1160 WCCS, the MSA Sports Network, and IUP-TV. Students in communications media at Indiana University of Pennsylvania can focus on a variety of areas, including media promotions. Our promotion students learn their skills by working in a hands-on environment gaining real-world experience. They learn how to use media to promote, produce and manage events, and how media organizations operate. They create promotional campaigns and help clients pitch their services, products, and events. With excellent classes led by experienced teachers, the communications media department at IUP is perfect for students interested in media promotions. Well, Matt Cook is going to kick off for Ian Lee, so you wonder if Ian is injured, Ward. He doesn't appear to be. I've been watching him on the sidelines. Uh, Jimmy Bence is injured. He's just beat up. He's played so hard. And they kick it away. And it's going to be taken by Portage. And with the football, returning it for the Mustangs is a new player in there. It looked like 38, and I don't have a 38. Logan Bellman made the tackle. Oh, is it three? Couldn't have been three. That's the quarterback, Berea. Yeah, he was out there, though. He was out there. That wasn't Berea, but He though. wasn't running that one, no. 35-yard line. You're right. So the football's at the 35-yard line, nonetheless. JV Indiana right. leading Ringle 21-7. Latter stages of that football game. So Indiana's going to move on and play, I think, West Allegheny. Good luck with that next Friday night, or Friday or Saturday. Berea still the quarterback, surprisingly, for the Mustangs. And he's going to pitch it left. And with the football, trying to turn the corners, Chris Onder. And Onder is dragged down as he gets close to the 45-yard line. And a flag comes in late. And uh, we'll see what this is all about. As Zayak for Homer Center looked like he might have been roughed up a little bit unless he was the aggressor. He hasn't been in long enough to get into the melee. Personal foul on Portage. Uh, they still got a lot of their starters in. Well, most of these kids uh, on the Humber side of the ball are JVs. Greg Page saying, why not an ejection? That's two hits, late yeah. hits. Yeah, we lose a guy, and, uh, and I, could, I understand his argument, and it's legitimate because that cost us a Homer Center. It cost them a, a, a lot losing a player, not only tonight, but they lose him next week. Well, they back it up to the 29-yard line, and is it 145 or 245 remaining? 245? Are you sure? Two minutes, 45 seconds. Well, I thought the touchdown occurred at the, the, the 238 mark. They're saying oh, they're below saying two. too. They can see it. We can't. <laughs> well, there's a timeout on the field with 2:45. The clock's going backwards. Well, that helps Homer Center if they want to get back yeah. in this game. IRMC High School Sports Night, 35-19 Portage. Back after this. This week's game is sponsored by OctoGrip. All right, back with you in Portage with the football out of the timeout. Is that Caleb Kephart still in there, Ward, on that carry? What on earth is he doing? Well, that, well they got all of their starters in yet. Look at that. You don't see any white jerseys there, white pants. Even the quarterback's still in the ball game, Brian. Brian Gerhardt on the tackle as we approach the two-minute mark. And uh, Berea still in there. With a 35-19, granted, I mean, it's a two-touchdown game. But Homer Center with reserves in there, they're exactly not uh, they are not exactly pushing yeah. the envelope here to get back in this game. Why they'd have their starters in at this situation, I don't, uh, I don't know. 
Well, they give it up the middle, and Luke Dividock, the Dividock fullback the the on the carry, gets to about the 44, and we're at 144 remaining in the football game. Steve McLaughlin, another tackle there. He's played a good game. He's, as I said, they've been using him everywhere. Ford, I just uh, got bad news on Ian Lee, and uh, with the way they treat this now, might not bode well for next week. It's a head issue. Oh, yeah, that's not good. So we'll talk to Greg Page on our post-game show, but uh, Portage burns a timeout with 110 remaining in the football game. We had a technical breakdown earlier, so we're going to make up a couple of those commercials right now with the score Portage 35 and the Homer Center Wildcats 19. We're going to come back for the conclusion of this football game on the 1160 WCCS MSA IUP TV Sports Network. All right, and while we were away, Herman punted the football, and the Wildcats are going to take over at their own 38-yard line, and there's a lot of things to be concerned about if you're a Homer Center supporter with injuries, ejection, well, one ejection, and uh, the possibility of facing a playoff game without your top two running backs. Yeah, that's a... Uh... That, that is not a very pleasant situation. Uh, but again, this is early. We're speculating. Uh, these things have a way of healing. I, I, it, you don't know how serious any of those injuries are. I think Mike Newhouse is walking around down there. So maybe he just got a sprain. They don't want to risk it. Um, Ian Lee, again, he, he may have symptoms rather than a regular concussion. So I'm sure those tests will be taken. And, and you just keep your fingers crossed and hope that the boys will be okay and they can play next week. Ireland, the quarterback in the final seconds of this uh, football game. And they hand it off and with the football for Homer Center is Monteo Coleman. And we are 50 seconds and counting here at Portage Stadium. And it's going to be a disappointing 10th uh, game for uh, Homer, you know, Homer to their center. credit, they, they battled back. I think they played pretty even game here in the second half. Mark had a critical turnover there, but uh, worked their way through that. Managed to put a couple of scores on the board. Uh, they showed some resiliency, but you know, when you when you lose your big gun, it's tough, and, and you have to work around that, and it's difficult to do because you build your offense around it. So sail in motion, they toss it right to Josh. And he cuts it back and uh, pretty nifty running up over the 40 to about the 41 yard line. Tackled on the play by Brandon Braden St. Clair. And we have witnessed the final play of this football game and it was not a good night for the team in black and white. It went awry on the opening drive when we thought we had a Wildcat touchdown off of an impressive drive. It was called back on a penalty. Mike Newhouse was hurt, ended up uh, stalling on an interception and it only got worse from there our final score tonight the Portage Mustangs 35 and the Homer Center Wildcats 19 from Portage Stadium stay with us for our first Commonwealth post game show for a relationship with the bank that puts you first think first Commonwealth Bank first Commonwealth Bank member FDIC we'll come back and recap this football game for you right after this on the 1160 WCCS MSA IUP TV Sports Network and for our IUP viewers we bid you a very pleasant good evening from Portage Stadium again 35-19 Mustangs and Homer Center's dream of an unbeaten season it's on to the playoffs 
but there's a lot to be concerned about with injuries and other situations with Homer Center. Again, 35-19 Portage back after this. 